Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be doing a tutorial on how to do a cable knit sweater design using dip and gel polish. For this, you will need a dip powder matching gel polish, your UV lamp, matte top coat, base coat, a thin nail art brush and a dotting tool, dip liquids, nail file and buffer block, clear dip powder, paper towels, and a duster brush, and rubbing alcohol. So there are several ways to do this design, and this is just how I did it. I will talk about quicker and easier ways to do it also. But first, I'm going to start out with DP05 from Sparkle & Co. as my base dip. And I want to do gel designs to be the same color, so I'm going to have to do some mixing with my gels to get it exactly the same. Um, I'm mixing gels 25 and... O2 from Sparkle & Co. And I'm just mixing these in the bottom part of a Dappen dish. It just works really well for mixing. Um, or you can use a tile or really any surface because gel wipes right off of it. But you want your powder and gels to be the same in color for this design. So you can either mix your dips together to match the gel or mix the gels like I'm doing to get them to match. And I'm just using a dotting tool to mix. And then once you have your desired color, you can go ahead and start your base dips. Um, take your time though, which is nice about gel because gel doesn't harden or cure until it's in a light. So you can mess with it forever and it's not going to dry on you. And also all of the products that I'm using in this video are Sparkling Co products. The gels, the dip powder, pretty much all of it. And if you've never ordered from Sparkle & Co. before, but you want to, um, use code SPARKLE10 for 10% off of your order plus free shipping over 25, and you'll always get free shipping over 25. And also feel free to type in my name in the notes at checkout and you'll receive a $9 credit for a future purchase. And Sparkle & Co. is my favorite company um, as far as dip powders go. I also love their gels and polish and pretty much every product in general, but I'll link all the info in the description of the video for you. Okay, so I'm going to take my DP05, which is this really pretty, um, like medium gray dip powder. It's a little bit lighter than the one on my nail currently, but it's a really pretty color. And I'm just going to take a thin coat of my base bond and going to dip into this dip powder. And for my swatches, for me personally, I lay them flat into my powder instead of dipping straight into the jar. I do this method a lot with my nails too. Um, the step I do especially with glitter dips. So you don't have to lay it flat. That's just what I'm doing. But keep your base coats pretty thin. You don't want thick, just thick, chunky nails. You want them thin. So just thin coats and dip it in. After you dip in, pat your powder off and let it dry for a second and then we'll dust off the extra powder with any kind of little duster brush. Okay, so now we're going to go in with our second coat of the base bond and you want to keep it thin as well and then just do your second dip like normal. And also, I always wipe my base brush on a paper towel before putting it back into my bottle. And this helps prevent powder from transferring into the bottle that can cause your liquid to become goopy or your brush to become hard. So it just makes sure that your liquids stay as clean as possible without contaminating them at all. Okay, so this is after two dips, and you can leave it with two dips, but I always do a third. So I'm going to go in with my third and final coat of Base Bond, and I'm also keeping this thin as possible. Just coat the whole nail and do your third and final dip. And then once that's done, we're going to let it dry for a second and then brush off your excess powder. Okay, so now my dips are done, so I'm going to close up my powder because we are officially done with it. And then what I'm going to do is take my activator or solidify, and what I'm going to do is do a pretty thick coat of solidify to kind of, you want to saturate the nail, you want it to soak down to all of your layers. Um, so do a pretty good 
amount of solidify. And then after you do your solidify, you're going to wait and let it sit for, I typically do around a minute. And then you can tell it's hard by the look of it. And also if you can tap it and it makes that clicking sound, you know it's hardened. Okay, so this is normally where you would buff and file your nail, but as you can see, it's laying really flat and it's really smooth, so I'm not even going to buff it. Um, if it had like lumps or anything, then I would, but this doesn't even need buffed at all, and it's nice and dry, so we're good to go. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my Sparkle & Co. gel base coat and my matte top coat, and I'm going to start doing the thin coat of gel base because I noticed that it helps mine it helps prevent me from my gel top coat peeling or chipping at all it almost like gives it that extra grip to hold on to so if you ever notice your top coat chipping when it comes to gel try the gel base before you do the gel top and it should help it from chipping and just make sure you cap your edges and everything so this step is optional you do not have to do this but I find that it works best for me. And then once you do that, you're going to go ahead and nuke it for about 30 to 45 seconds in an LED light. And when that's cured, it's going to feel tacky and look shiny. So now I'm going to go in with a thin coat of my matte gel top coat. And this is my favorite matte gel top coat I've tried so far. Um, all Sparkle & Co. And then you're going to paint on a pretty thin coat. Make sure that you cap all of your edges to help prevent it from peeling or chipping. And then you're gonna nuke this for about 60 seconds. If you have a UV light, I would recommend doing it for about two minutes. But if it's just an LED, depending on the wattage, I always do 60 seconds and it works great for me. Okay, so now that that's done, here is our completed matte swatch stick. And this color actually looks really pretty just as matte without a design too. Um, but yeah, so the matte is all done and now we can go ahead and start painting our cable or knit design. For this design, I'm going to use a thin nail art brush and a dotting tool, whichever size you want, and then some alcohol for easy cleanup. And also, I'm going to use clear dip powder, and this is we're going to pour over our gel design, giving you that 3D sugared look. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and just wet my brush in it. This just makes sure that if I have any little bristles sticking out that they're all together and not moving all different directions and anything like that. And so this is the nail that I'm going for is my middle finger, this little cable knit design. And I'm going to start with the center design first. Okay, so please don't judge me. This was like two in the morning and I am nowhere near professional. So this isn't perfect, but it will definitely do. Okay, so I'm starting by painting a thin line down the nail and do it a little bit off center towards the right because once you add those little loops for the cable knit, it's going to be look more centered. Um, so what I'm going to do is do that line down the middle and when it looks even, I'm going to paint on little U shapes connecting to the line I have already painted. So it's kind of like a half U and then it connects to the line if that makes sense. And this will give us that cable knit look. And I didn't like how this one looked, as you can see in a second. I wasn't a huge fan, so I wiped it off with alcohol. Okay, so starting over, I'm going in and painting some of those half U shapes towards the center of the nail a little bit to the left. And it's just the little tiny half shape. It's almost like a reverse comma. 
and just kind of paint those. You can do however many you want, as close together as you want. It's just all by preference, but this is going to give you that cable knit look. And also I'm hand painting mine, but there's some cheat ways to do this. Um, cheat number one, I've discovered recently that some companies now carry some cable knit stickers and decals and you could put the stickers on and then go over them with your gel. This would be much quicker and easier and they would be perfect. Like each nail would match perfectly. My left hand is a little bit different than my right hand because I'm right-handed so my left looks a lot better but yeah you can definitely cheat and do the sticker method would be awesome and I would have done that if I had the stickers and also a good thing about doing your top coat first before the designs is because if you mess up it or don't like how it looks at all use alcohol and it just wipes right off it doesn't affect any of your previously done nail alcohol is not going to soak in and ruin your dip or your gel it's just going to help you clean up any mistakes that you made and it comes right off like you can't even tell. So I never use acetone when doing gel polish only for the soak off. Otherwise, I only use the rubbing alcohol. It's less harsh on your skin and it works amazingly well. Okay, so I'm just finishing up that U shape but also connecting them on the right side so you get that nice cable knit effect. Um... And that's all it is, is just little U shapes, like half U's, and then almost like a rounded line to kind of finish that out. And now I'm just going through with my brush trying to perfect any spots that I may have messed up on. So not perfect, but here it is compared to my middle nail. It's a little bit bigger. But now I'm going to take my clear dip powder, and you can use any dip, but clear is best in my opinion. And I'm just going to scoop it over my design. If I were to lay it in or dip it in, it might cause the gel to move, which I don't want. So I find spooning it over is the easiest. And then I'm going to nuke that for about 30 to 45 seconds. Okay, and then once it's done nuking, what you're going to do is just take your duster brush and brush off any extra clear powder that might be hanging out on the nail. And then, sorry, mine is slightly off-center, um, but it happens. It's all good. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is just go back in, and I'm going to go over that design one more time with a little bit thicker layer to help it stand out more and give it that 3D look. You don't have to do this step, just depending on how much you want it to stand out. I want it to be a little bit thicker, so I'm just going in one more time. And you can see the difference from applying the fresh polish over it for the second coat. It just gives it a little bit more pop is all. Okay, and so once you have that, how you like it, um, and make sure to go in, try to keep it as even as possible, the thickness throughout the design. It'll give you a better end result. But just touch up any spots that you feel need it. And then what you're going to do is go back in with your clear dip powder, or you can use clear acrylic powder. I just like dip powder, especially since I have it on hand. And you're just going to do another scoop of it over your design. And then nuke it again for another 30 to 45 seconds is all it should take. Or you could even do like 90 seconds in a UV lamp just to be safe. But if it's LED, 60 seconds, even 45 seconds should be good. Okay, so now that that's dry, we're going to dust off the clear again. And now we're going to go in and try to paint the little side, either side of the cable knit. It's like a line with these little downward angle lines. I don't know what you would even call them. <coughs> but try to paint a line on the side of that as straight as possible. And you want them to be as centered as possible 
obviously, so it looks better on the nail. My swatch is not that centered. I was trying to do it through the camera, so it's a little off-center, but it'll still work and you still get the point of it. But just paint a straight line, as straight as possible, down the side of the nail. And then we're going to go in with those little downward angle lines. And these, I don't even know what you would call them or the right term for them, but you can see they're just, there's really no way to mess these up. And just try to make sure there's the same amount of lines on each side. And they almost look like little triangles once they're on. But yeah, really no way to mess it up. You just kind of put them on there. And if you don't like how they look, like right here, I did one. I did like one too many. It was way too close. I'm just going to dip my brush into the alcohol, like wipe it off first, dip it into the alcohol and then just wipe off any spots that you don't like. It comes off super easy. Um, I'm actually going to use a little bit bigger brush cause I have it handy and I'm just going to pretty much erase the couple lines that I just did and just a little bit of rubbing alcohol gets it right off. Doesn't mess up any of the other ones. And then it kind of evens out my straight line as well. So just clean it up the best you can and touch up any uneven or messed up lines. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm just going back in with my DP90 Crystal Clear and spooning that over. And then tap off your extra powder. And then we're going to cure this for about 45 seconds. Okay, and then once it's dry, just dust off your extra powder. And this is how it looks so far. Okay, and now I'm just going back in over that same design and just thicken it up a little bit. Um, after you thicken it up and make it all nice and even, we're going to do the clear dip again, and then we're going to nuke it for another about 45 seconds. Okay, so just going back over it with my clear dip again, making sure that it's nice and coated. And this is what gives you that sugared or 3D effect. And tap off your extra powder, and then we're going to go ahead and cure it. Okay, so I've had a lot of ladies ask me if the design gets snagged or caught on anything at all. And the answer is no. It is thin and it doesn't stick out as far as you think it would. Um, there's no jagged edges. It's actually pretty, pretty even with the nail as you can see. It just, it has a little bit of texture is all, but no sharp edges. It hasn't snagged on anything at all. And it's actually, it doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. It's fairly smooth and you wouldn't think it would be, but it really is. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in with my gel and I'm going to do that same design with the little, with the line and then the little downward dashes. I'm going to do the same thing just on the left side. And I tried to hurry this design. Um, I took about an hour doing one hand when I did my own nails. So please ignore the off-center design. Um, I mean, you get the gist of it. And I think it looks decent. It's just a little shifted to the left. Okay, so my line is painted and I'm going to go in and just do those quick little 
dashes and just make sure there's the same amount of them that's on the other side so it all's even and lines up. And then I'm going to take my clear, put it on top, and I'm going to nuke this for 45 seconds. Okay, so now we're going to take our dotting tool and we're going to create those little dots on either side of the design. And here's actually a little trick. You can mix some of your clear dip into the gel to create an almost paste-like consistency. Um, and this may be easier for some people as it's not as running as gel polish. It's actually much easier to, um, what's the word for it? Much easier to work with if you mix it in your gel polish that thicker paste because it won't cure and it won't dry until you cure it so it's much easier to work with and you don't want it super thick just a little bit thicker than normal consistency and sometimes it's just easier to work with it's not as runny so and it cleans up the same way it, it actually cleans up easier than normal gel does you just take the rubbing alcohol and it just like lifts right off the nail. So it's almost the consistency of acrylic with when it has the monomer in it, that like pasty consistency, but it's not going to cure on you. And also cheat number two for this design. If you have a cable knit stamping plate, your life will be much, much easier. So you can do your dips like normal with the matte top coat and then stamp your design on top of the matte top coat cure it and then go over it with the gel polish or with the um i mean i don't know if gel polish will work on a stamp so just do your stamp with the normal polish and then go over it with the gel polish or with the powder mixed in with the gel and then do your clear coat with the clear powder on top of your design and then we're going to cure that for 60 seconds but yeah it would be much easier than hand painting and a lot faster and so now i'm just covering it with my clear powder again now that my design is done and i'm going to cure it for 60 seconds this time because this is the last time i'm going to have to cure it And also, here's a close-up of the consistency. You can see it's still gel, but it's definitely more like a paste. So it's easier to work with, and it gives you that thick layer without having to do two coats of it. And then this is just my cleanup process. I take a paper towel with some rubbing alcohol, clean up my dotting tool, and clean your brushes this way too. And then I'm actually going to use this same paper towel if i have any gel polish that's on my skin it comes right off with the alcohol and then i'm going to use the rubbing alcohol to clean off my dappen dish just kind of saturate your paper towel and it cleans it right off like this is why i'm saying don't have to use acetone for gel polish especially for cleanup rubbing alcohol works perfect and it's less harsh on your skin and rubbing alcohol is not going to ruin any plastic finish or damage anything like acetone would. Okay, and now that our swatch is done, we're going to dust off the extra powder, and we are done with our cable knit sweater design. And here you go, and in comparison to the one that I painted on my nail. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment with something you would like to see, always taking options for videos. Deuces and smooches!